Hello and welcome to this special message from Philadelphia Baptist Church in Rutledge, Georgia. I'm Pastor Stephen Chambers and in this message we are going to be considering the topic of gratitude. I would invite you to turn in your Bibles to the book of Colossians chapter number 4. How would you describe a person who is always being given things but never stops to say thank you? You might call them an ingrate or even a spoiled brat. Most people are repulsed by the idea of someone who has such an entitlement mentality, always expecting to be given what they want, and never being grateful for what they have already been given. Well, Colossians chapter 4 and verse number 2 is a reminder to us that prayer is not only about getting stuff from God, it's also about thanking Him for what He's already done for us. Notice the verse says, Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. It is important for us to remember to be thankful. And specifically when it comes to our prayer life, we should frequently tell God, thank you. If we never express gratitude to God in prayer, then we are acting like that spoiled brat. We must be thankful for what God has done for us and approach the throne of God with gratitude. The first thought I want to consider together is the expectation of gratitude. When our children were small, we tried to teach them to always say thank you when they were given something. If someone would give them something, we would say to our children, now what do you say? And they would respond, thank you. Now that our children are older, we still have to remind them, but hopefully not as often. We want there to be an expectation of gratitude. Gratitude, you must understand, is not a feeling, it's a choice. We know that it's a choice because it's something that God commands us to do. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 says, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. And every choice or every command, rather, implies a choice. You're in the book of Colossians. I want you to note with me three other times in this one New Testament book where we are instructed to be thankful. Go to chapter 2 and look at verse number 7. The verse says, Rooted and built up in Him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Look at chapter 3. Verse number 15, And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Also verse 17 of that same chapter, And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. Very clearly, we are commanded to be thankful but many times we don't feel like being thankful. Sometimes we feel like whining and complaining. And that's when we have to make the choice to be obedient to God's instruction and to give thanks anyway. Gratitude is not a matter of personality either. Whether you tend to be the kind of person who is as happy as a cartoon princess in a forest full of animals or you tend to be the kind of person that can always find the dark cloud behind every silver lining, doesn't make any difference. We have to choose to be grateful. Now to understand how seriously God views ingratitude, consider what He says in Romans chapter 1, verse 21. There the Bible reads, Because that when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. There the ungodly are being described. And it says that they refused to recognize God, and they refused to give God thanks. Ingratitude is a defining characteristic of the ungodly. Think about it. When you deny the existence of God, 
you are only left with a conclusion that man is indeed the measure of all things. We are responsible for our own fate. Therefore, why would we give God thanks for anything? If that is the way you think, then thanking God for anything makes no sense. So an ungrateful Christian is behaving like an atheist. In the Gospels, we read a story where Jesus cleansed ten lepers. It's recorded for us in Luke 17. When Jesus encountered these ten men with this very highly contagious and deadly disease, Jesus did the unthinkable. He approached them. And he instructed them to go and show themselves to the priest. That way they could be recognized as clean and could re-enter society. And on the way there, they were healed. You would think that they would all be overcome with gratitude, but that was not the case. Look at Luke 17, verse number 15. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, Were not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? There are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. Of the ten that were healed, only one gave thanks. Too often, we act like the nine lepers. Oh, we're glad for the blessings that we have received, but we don't express gratitude to the one who gave us the blessings. Let's follow the example of the one who actually stopped and said thank you. Let's see, secondly, the foundation of gratitude. We understand that God expects us to be grateful, but what reason do we have to be grateful? And why do we find it so hard to be grateful many times? Simply because we've been spoiled. We have been given so many good things that we have taken them for granted. Things that are luxuries are now considered to be needs. But God says that our standard for contentment is much lower. 1 Timothy 6, 8 says, And having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. Do you have clothes? Did you have something to eat today? Well, then God says you have enough. The foundation of gratitude is the attitude of contentment. An attitude that says, I have enough and I have so much more than I actually deserve. Everything we have has been graciously given to us by God. But we live in a culture that is inundated with an entitlement mentality. We think we deserve everything. And we need to stop and remember that what we really deserve is death and hell for all of eternity. Anything better than that is only by the grace of God. Ephesians chapter 2, beginning in verse 5 says, Even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace are you saved, and hath raised us up together, and made us sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. See, gratitude is rooted in the understanding that God does not owe us anything. Everything that we have is simply a gift that God has given to us. When you realize that anything that you receive in this life is a gracious gift of God, then you have the right perspective on life. And that perspective produces gratitude. James 3, rather James chapter 1 verse 17 says, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above 
and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. So once you come to grips with what you really need, which is very little, and what God has given you, which is a whole lot, then you realize how much you have to be grateful for. If we would just stop and consider how much we have that we do not deserve, we would be overcome with gratitude. And it would not be hard for us then to obey the commands of Scripture, like Ephesians chapter 5 and verse number 20, which says, "...giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ." In the New Testament, Jesus told a parable of the prodigal son. And in that parable, we find a very good illustration of a young man who was not grateful for what he had, who had an entitlement mentality. He was discontent and as a result, ruined his life. The prodigal's ingratitude was demonstrated when he left the father's house where he had love, safety, and provision, thinking that he could find something better somewhere else. The Bible tells us in Luke 15, 13, that not after, and not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when all of his money finally ran out, he found himself abandoned and poor. Eventually, he had to find work at a pig farm. And there in the pigsty, so hungry that he could eat the pig slop, he finally came to his senses. And he said, how many of my father's hired servants have food enough to eat? And here I am, starving feeding pigs, wishing I could eat their slop. He finally realized that in the father's house he had everything he needed. And he should have been grateful and he should have been content. The Apostle Paul is a great example of someone who had this right attitude of gratefulness. And that gratitude was linked to his contentment. Because when you're thankful for whatever you have, you will be grateful for whatever you get. Listen to what Paul wrote in chapter 4, verses 11 and 12 of the book of Philippians. He said, Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatever state I am therewith to be content. I know how to be abased, and I know how to abound everywhere, And in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. Paul was thankful for everything he had and therefore content with whatever he got. Now the opposite of this grateful contentment is the attitude of complaining. People complain when they don't feel like they have what they need or they want or deserve. When people complain, they are really impugning God's character. They're really saying, God has not met my needs like He said He would. God has not provided for me. And complaining reveals an ungrateful and discontent heart. The Israelites that wandered in the wilderness were habitual complainers. Numbers 11.1 says, And when the people complained, it displeased the Lord, and the Lord heard it, and His anger was kindled. Psalm 78 tells us that because of their complaining and their unbelief, they limited the Holy One of Israel. They limited what God would do for them because they were not grateful for what God had done for them. It says in Psalm 78, verse 17, And they sinned yet more against Him by provoking the Most High in the wilderness. And they tempted God in their heart by asking meat for their lust. Yea, they spake against God. They said, Can God furnish a table in the wilderness? Behold, He smote the rock, and the waters gushed out, and the streams overflowed. Can He give bread also? Can He provide flesh for His people? See, they were not content with the manna that God miraculously provided for them. They wanted something different. They wanted something more. They complained about the food. They complained about the water. 
They complained about the trip. They complained about everything. Murmuring and complaining, though, is not just an Old Testament problem. It's also a New Testament problem. That's why Paul wrote in Philippians 2, do all things without murmurings and disputings. The idea of murmurings is a grumbling, complaining. 1 Corinthians 10, verses 10 and 11. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured, and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now all these things happened unto them for examples, that they, and they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. So when we read about the Israelites and how they were complaining and God punished them for it, that is an example for us. A reminder that we need to be grateful for whatever God is doing and whatever God has given to us. God does not take murmuring and complaining lightly. And the source of that murmuring and complaining is an ungrateful heart. After all that God has done for us, what right do we have to complain? It is only by God's mercy that we're even still here on this earth. And if we think that God owes us anything, we are mistaken. God will not bless an ungrateful heart. Complaining limits what God will do in your life. But the solution is to be thankful, to give thanks for everything, to have that attitude of gratefulness. And it doesn't matter how bad life may seem, there's always something to be thankful for. So the foundation for gratitude is contentment. Realizing I don't deserve anything except death and hell. And yet God has given me so much. Therefore, I ought to be grateful to Him. I want you to see with me, thirdly, the glorification of gratitude. Why should we be grateful? What is the goal? What's the purpose of our gratitude? To some people, their worst fear is to be thought of as an ingrate. So they go out of their way to say thanks just so that people will not think ill of them. Now, it's not wrong to be thankful, but it is wrong to express gratitude for the wrong reasons. Remember what Jesus said about the Pharisees in Matthew chapter 6. He said that they did things like praying, giving, and fasting to be seen of men. And his instruction to his disciples was, Be not as the hypocrites, because they do what they do to be seen of men. So the goal of our gratitude cannot be to magnify ourselves. The goal of our gratitude should be to glorify God. Turn to the book of Psalms and look with me at Psalm 100. Many of the psalms are psalms of praise, giving glory to God. In Psalm 100, verse number 4 says, Enter into His gates with thanksgiving, and into His courts with praise. Be thankful unto Him, and bless His name. The purpose of our praise and our thanksgiving is to bring glory to God. True praise is when we are thankful unto Him. The popular phrase, praise and worship, has some people confused about what praise is. They think praise involves music that moves us emotionally or physically to respond. But that is not the New Testament definition of praise. Hebrews 13 verse 15 says... By Him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is, the fruit of our lips giving thanks to His name. That is what real praise is. The fruit of our lips giving thanks to His name. Can that be done in song with music? Absolutely. But it can also be done in everyday conversation. And it can also be done silently in your heart. I fear that the way... Praise is sometimes done, does more to magnify us than to magnify God. I'm not against sharing praises publicly. We ought to do that, whether it's in church or social media. But the danger is that our flesh will enjoy the praises we get from the comments of others 
instead of making sure that God gets all of the praise. We need to learn to praise God in such a way that we are invisible in that praise. Our attitude should be like John the Baptist when he said, He must increase, I must decrease. Remember, you deserve nothing more than death and hell. Anything better than that is by the grace of God. And everything that you enjoy in this life is a gift from God. It is God then that deserves your grateful praise. Now look with me back in Colossians chapter 4 and verse number 2. We're told to continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. The first place our gratitude should be expressed is in our personal prayer life. We're told to continue in prayer. The idea there is that we are to be praying regularly. Do you have a habit of prayer? 1 Thessalonians 5.17 says it this way, Pray without ceasing. So there is an expectation of prayer here as well. But notice the verse also says that we are to watch in the same. As in be on guard. Our hearts and our minds need to be protected from the wicked lies of Satan. So prayer is to the soul what armor is to the body. It guards us. It protects us. As Jesus said to his disciples in the garden the night before he was crucified, he said, watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. We are to continue in prayer and watch in the same. And here's the key phrase with thanksgiving, with a grateful spirit, giving God thanks, protects our hearts and our minds from the godless ingratitude that would rob us of the contentment and joy that comes from knowing that God has given us everything we need and so much more than we deserve. When was the last time that you just told God, thank you? When you came to God in prayer and you didn't ask for anything, you just took that time to express your gratitude to God. We need to thank God for who He is. We need to thank God for what He's done for us. We need to thank God for what He has given to us. You have so much to be grateful for. So when you come to God in prayer, don't just ask for things. Take the time to tell God, thank you. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, You are so good to us. You have blessed us with so many things. Lord, we recognize tonight that we do not deserve these things. Lord, thank you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercy and grace. Thank you for giving your Son so that we could be saved. Thank you for our homes, for our families. Thank you for our church. Thank you for our jobs. Thank you for our friends. Thank you for the Holy Spirit who lives in us and enables us to be what you want us to be. Lord, We just want to praise you and recognize how good you are. And we trust that you will magnify yourself in us personally and through us as well. Because Lord, you alone 
deserve all the glory and honor. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.